Hey everyone. So today I wanted to share with you a Shunk hydraulic holder and really go over their claims. Okay, so I've pulled up the PDF here. Now you can see their claim up to 300% longer tool life. Does it actually hold up out in the field in the machine shops? Short answer, I haven't calculated exact tool life. I've had customers tell me they get five to 10 times the tool life, would be 500 to 1000% more. I've had customers that see they see a 50% increase. And I think it has a lot to do with the materials being cut, the tools being used, and the programming strategy as they all really affect the outcomes. This 300% they're talking about, chances are that's an average, which I mean, makes sense. Now, Shunk's been in business from 1945 to 2021 now, so more than 70 years. These specs are still up to date. You can see it says the original with the three rings. This is because a lot of other people in the industry have tried to copy and duplicate their results without success. Now, specifically, we're talking today about the Tendo E-Compact. They do have a ton of other selections. My biggest return on investment for the customers has been this series. Uh, for you tool and die guys, the ones making molds, their long reach tapered holders, their platinum series, all of that is definitely worth the investment. This is kind of like that introductory option to get into it. So we flip down through their catalog. They've always got their soccer stars. They like to talk about everything. They really do offer something in every area. Um, their magnetic stuff is also fantastic as well as their Vero, their lathe chucks. I really enjoy Shunk a lot. It's not because they're cheap, but the quality they put in. As a tradesman, as someone who loves honing my craft, I can appreciate the time and thought they put into their product design as well as the manufacturing process. They don't cut corners. There's some manufacturers out there who are always looking to cut corners to reduce costs. Shunk is not one of them. Now, you can see some more of their own claims right here. Milling, roughing, finishing. Yes, roughing as well as finishing. Now, the biggest return I've seen from material removal rates has been on the roughing side of the equation. Finishing has had good results. It's just, it's harder to measure the return when you're doing your finishing. Yes, there is superior finish. Yes, there is increased tool life, but finishing tools tend to last a little bit longer. Now that's gonna be a little bit different if you have a high finish requirement these are going to have a way bigger results. Now you can see here, a lot of their advertisements use the HSK 63A compact design for their tool shanks. They fit on and add better. They look better, they're sexy. They do offer this, however, in a lot of different shank styles. Uh, I've supplied them in Cat 40, Cat 50, BT, as well as the HSK 63A style. Now, here's some more high torques, up to 2,000 newton meters at a 32 mil diameter, 900 newton meters with an oily shank. Definitely reduces chatter. Uh, one of the recent success stories, I had a customer that was using one of the Harvey 300 degree ball cutters. Fantastic tools, but they were holding it in the ER and they kept getting these little like skip marks in the finish, they couldn't figure out where it was coming from. We switched them over to a hydraulic holder and those skip marks went away. It was literally just the way they were holding the tool. Now they got a nice big picture there of it roughing away. They talk about reaming, drilling, tapping. Um, I haven't had anyone use these for tapping yet. I've heard they are fantastic. It's just not where I've seen them being invested definitely worth a try. They talk about the run out here. Now this is one of the things that make them stand out. If you notice that dial is way off the face of the tool. 2.5 times D up to a max of 50 millimeters, you will get 0 0.003 mil run out. That is not inches, that is millimeters, okay? Now here it talks about the vibration dampening, which is one of the keys to their success. They've also redesigned 
the bladder so that you can no longer over tighten these and you can no longer damage these tool holders when they are empty. When they first released these tool holders 15 years, maybe longer ago, um, I was on the shop floor and we had invested in some and one of the first things someone did, uh, you gotta love the setup guys, um, they fully cranked it um, when it was empty for God knows what reason and it damaged the bladder. Now we were able to get it repaired but they've since redesigned this feature so you don't have to worry about it. If someone shuts it all the way, there's a physical stop now that prevents the excessive pressure that would cause bladder damage. Now you've got standard Allen key, again, because they are now going to a physical stop, you don't have to worry about using a torque key with these. You can clamp all shaft types Obviously, you're still going to get more rigidity when you're using a solid shank and you get more adjustment for bringing the tool in and out of the holder. Because obviously, you would not want to have half of your whistle notch or your weld-in shank sticking out up here. You want to have full surface contact while you're going over this. Now, maintenance-free is a good thing. Some tool holders that have hard clamping, they might be a little bit cheaper, but they require you to have a lot of maintenance on them. Um, not pointing fingers, just know before you invest what kind of maintenance you're looking at for your tool holders. They all have their trade-offs and they're always worth it, but it's something to consider. Now, here's some more details, the actuation screw, the piston, the expansion sleeve, the holder bodies. As you can see, HSK, SK, JAS, BT, CAT, etc length adjustment screw, which is down here in the bottom, right? Number five, they're just kind of really going over everything here. Now, obviously there's the tool sliding it in. You do want to make sure that you have some, you have this adjusted to the bottom. You don't want it free floating, uh, which is good practice for ER or however you're holding your tools. If you don't have a stop there, there's a tendency for your tool to push in. One nice thing with the 2000 newton meter clamping force is pull out is a thing of the past with these holders. Also comparing these to heat shrink, you might be wondering, well, okay, what about heat shrink? Uh, there's some key differences there. One, heat shrink, you've got to invest in a machine and a system to change it. Two, your holders now have a tool life to them. They have so many exchanges and you also have to worry about heat transfer to the metal, heating it up and causing pull out, which makes these a far better solution for roughing. Some would argue finishing, but obviously the heat transfer to the tool body is different when you are finishing. Now it talks about the run out accuracy. They compare against ER, Weldon, heat shrink tool holders, the holding force, which is the biggest takeaway, right? Even at the low end, the 900 Newton meters worth of force, right? At that 20 mil clamping, you can see ER call it chucks, 220 Newton meters. Weldon is form fit clamping. So you've got that physical screw preventing retraction, but you know, it has its limits. The run out really in the high RPM, high material removal rates. And then you've got heat shrink, which is around 420. As you can see, heat shrink, is much greater at holding that tool in than an ER call it chuck. However, still not as much retention. And there's another difference between the heat shrink here and the Tendo E Compact. The heat shrink here, you buy your holder and typically it's size on size, that's it. With the Tendo E Compact, you have the option to sleeve it and have a variety of sleeves. So you can literally buy a couple of these for your roughers, have different sleeves for the different size roughers if you don't have common tooling already in place, and you're good to go. You still have that versatility, similar to a collet chuck, faster tool change than a collet chuck, and you don't have to worry about all the chips and shit that gets into your collets with collet chucks. I am not by no means saying collet chucks don't have a place in a machine shop. They definitely do. Their versatility is huge. When you're in a jobbing shop and you've got six ER collets and a collet set, you're loaded for bear, you're ready to go. It's just when you're looking to push to that next level to beat out your competition, to win the quotes, this is an investment that gets you there. Now, 
You can look at all the different mounting styles. Like I said, HSK 63A all the way through to BT30, HSK A100. They have tons available. These are compact, so they are a shorter gauge length, which again, for that roughing application is huge. They do have other series that have different lengths. This is what they have available. So you can actually pause it right here. I'll move the cursor out of the way. If you're curious, you wanna have a quick look, or you can always hit me up for the PDF or the links or type it on the Google machine, whatever floats your boat. Now, they've got cleaning heads that you can mount in there, which is really cool. Um, it talks about the intermediary sleeves. They've got a sealed sleeve or they've got a slotted sleeve. Now, if you have not seen these run, head on over to YouTube, have a look because the way that these jets, so the top of this sleeve, do they have a picture in this PDF? Things to check. Okay, they do. So you can see here in this PDF, you see how the coolant comes out at an angle, it hits the shank, comes down the side of the tool. So when you're roughing, say your tool doesn't have through tool coolant, right? You've got a GAR ARC series rougher in there, knuckle rougher, and you just really wanna rip it up. So right here, that allows you to get a typhoon of coolant swirling around your tool and it pushes all the chips away. When you don't have through tool coolant, this is the next best option. It's not the same as flooding it through an ER collet that kind of goes everywhere and you don't have to worry about an extra sealing disc to put on your ER system. Um, it's just watching this run in a machine and clearing off all the chips now they've got a bunch of pretty pictures. You can, you know, kind of shows off the versatility, thread mills, end mills, indexable thread mills, slitting tools, whatever. You can honestly throw whatever you want in here. I talk about the roughing because that's what saved customers the most money in my experience. Um, and it's kind of like a prove it to yourself investment to the company. You know, if they're looking at that ROI, they want to know differences. So one of the reasons I'm sharing this with you today, if you're still with me, thank you, appreciate it is we've actually got a promotion. I'm gonna switch tabs here. Yeah, that's coming up. Okay. So right now in the first quarter until the end of March, you can actually invest in this system and get four, five for the price of four. So you buy four, you get the fifth one for free. And if you do that, you also get to do that with the sleeves as well. Now, the sleeves aren't ridiculously expensive. I find them to be quite fairly priced considering what's available there. Um, or you can do the Tribos extensions. These are great for mold making for getting that long reach. Um, but I don't want to get sidetracked there. I'm really just talking about the holders and the sleeves. There's a whole Tribos pump thing. It's, it's really cool technology. Can totally do a video about that another time. But right here. So you buy four, you get the fifth for free. Now you get a few roughing tools, you get a finishing tool, you get everything else going on. And if you've got multiple machines, which is quite often the case with a lot of shops, is you invest in this and you can put it across different machines to allow you to have that single roughing thing. As I mentioned earlier, having a standard roughing tool that you go to that your programmers use can actually speed up your transition time. Uh, quite common right now, what I'm seeing is like uh, five eighths or a three quarter rougher, and then they worry, they pick their special finishing tools, the tool nose radius and everything else. But investing into this system right here is for me, a no brainer. If you don't have them already, or hey, you know what, you're watching this video, you're like, yes, Arthur, I love the Shunk Tendo EC holders. This is perfect. This is a perfect opportunity for you to buy four, get one free, and double down, which is honestly the most common thing. You know, most often people will buy one at the first beginning and then they'll try it. They will love it. But by the time they've tried it and loved it, these promos are usually done. And then they usually wait to the next promo or they invest one at a time or they end up just paying full price because they're worth it and they see it. So I'm just sharing this with you so you know now what's an option for you as you're investing. 
by far this has been like the number one tool holder that I have been sharing with people over the last couple of years. And it's really only because of the results. You know, buy it, don't buy it, whatever you want to choose, you now have more information. I'm here for more questions, whatever that looks like to you. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to check this out with me. If you have any questions, if you'd like to get something quoted, let me know. I'm here to support you. In the end, my name's Arthur Field. I'm a territory manager for Thomas Skinner & Son. My passion is Canadian manufacturing. And whatever I can do to keep your spindles turning and earning so that we can boost our economy and be stable and self-sufficient within our country, I mean, that, that's what I live for. Last year saw a lot of reshoring of work and it was exciting to be a part of that, to really sit down with customers, to look at their prints, to go over the tooling requirements and see where we could improve the process, where we could reduce cycle time, how we could change part handling and all of that. I look forward to sharing more of this with you. <laughs> so don't miss out on an opportunity to invest in the Tendo EC you will not regret it. Seriously, I've had zero complaints. Um, the closest I came to a complaint was they were so popular that the delivery was a little long, um, but that's the closest. They were just anxious to get it. Uh, so, I mean, take it or leave it. I'm not pushing anything on you. I just want to make sure you're aware. Thank you so much. Have a great day.